Elon Musk's Starlink satellite internet service is taking the world by storm, but it still has a lot of quirks and issues. And so we here at Speedify have been doing tons of research and testing on our own with Starlink dishes all over our roofs to see how we can solve these issues. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the surprises we found and changes we made in Speedify to make it work better with Starlink. So what is Speedify? So Speedify is an app that's available on all sorts of different devices, Android and iOS and Mac and Windows. And it's a service that allows you to make use of multiple internet connections. So you can combine them for speed, for better reliability, and for more security. So it's a, it tunnels all your traffic through a VPN server that we have. It's a VPN that shows up on your device and we can make choice packet by packet which internet connection particular packets are going to go over. So this really improves the internet experience if you have connections that are failing or connections that are slow. Speedify can make a, take advantage of all those different internet connections and give you a better experience. Starlink is SpaceX's new satellite internet service. You get a dish and they have low earth orbit satellites. These are not the old 30,000 miles in geosynchronous orbit. This is thousands of satellites whizzing by just 75 miles in the air, giving you really fast internet. At least a lot of the time it gives you really fast internet. What kind of performance are you seeing out of Starlink? Yeah, so when things are working well, I mean, you can be up at 200, 300 megabits download, which is really fast for, for satellite internet, and latency is usually pretty low, you know, 50, 60 milliseconds a lot of times versus traditional satellite, you could see hundreds of milliseconds, sometimes even over a second of latency, which also means that it, it ends up being really slow. Usually you can't get high download speeds. I, you know, I don't have the exact numbers, but usually you're, you're below 50 megabits usually with, with traditional uh, satellites, sometimes even down in the kilobits with some of the technologies. And then, you know, upload speeds are, are pretty decent too. But yeah, you see a lot better performance uh, with Starlink versus traditional satellite internet. But the problem is that because these satellites are going by all the time, it can be really good at some points and then at some points it can get really bad and it can even drop out completely so it can go from really fast to really slow you know in a matter of minutes which makes it you know a challenging connection to work with because it's constantly changing versus other other connections that are usually more could be more stable more predictable now a lot of our audience is super into live streaming which means upload speeds and it means reliability so what what does starlink do for them or not do for them <laughs> So yeah, I mean, Starlink does give pretty decent upload speeds uh, when it's working well, enough that you could do some high quality streams. But yeah, the challenge again is when those satellites move by and move out of range and it has to switch over to something else that, that upload speed can drop down. What Speedify can do is it can bond in another connection and we can detect when that Starlink's starting to slow down and help to bond in the upload speed of another connection to give you consistent performance for that, that stream. I mean, if it drops out completely, move you over to, to other connections. Speedify has a streaming mode where we detect that these streams are high priority traffic and we prioritize that traffic above other traffic. And then we're also watching for times that we want to send traffic redundantly. So the Starlink's starting to fail, we can make the decision to send packets over multiple connections, copies of the same packets over multiple connections at the same time and deliver whatever gets through first uh, to give you the best reliability we can with the kind of variable connections or connections that drop out. So did you hit any surprises? You know, did, did Speedify just work perfectly over Starlink and fix all of its issues or did you discover anything? No, yeah, we've been making you know, iterative changes over time, different improvements with, with Starlink. With how variable it is, we had to make some adjustments to you know, some of our congestion algorithms and algorithms that determine you know, how much traffic we let in flight over a particular connection. We had to make some adjustments to deal with how variable the Starlink could be. You know, the latency can jump around quite a bit. And so, yeah, we had to make adjustments there uh, with our bonding algorithms and everything to really make sure that we're appropriately using the Starlink and that we can fully utilize the Starlink when it's working well, but also being able to detect when it's slowing down uh, much quicker and being able to fail over much quicker. We had you know, improvements in a bunch of those areas. And we're continuing to do testing with Starlink. I'd say it seems like, you know, without any hard numbers, it seems like Starlink's getting a little more consistent as they launch more and more satellites. So over time, you know, more than it was a year or two ago. But yeah, there's still that variability there and variability with the technology. So yeah, we're constantly kind of monitoring and seeing where we can make tweaks in the performance. Yeah, I don't think we, we've ever seen an internet connection that changes as much as the Starlink does. I mean, certainly Wi-Fi, you know, it'll be good for a while and then you'll leave the house and it'll get worse and worse and worse. But the way that the Starlink gets worse and then gets better and gets worse yeah. and gets better, I don't think we've ever seen anything that's strained our ability to, you know, adjust to it as much as the Starlink. Yeah, def definitely. Yeah, it's definitely kind of a unique connection, something that we haven't dealt with before. It's changed how we look at some of these connections and how we're dealing with certain connections. 
So how many Starlinks do we have here at Speedify now? So we currently have three. <laughs> yeah, we have three, three Starlink dishes. Yeah, we started out with one. And we did, you know, different performance tests over it. And we were doing, you know, long running live stream tests over it to see, you know, what would happen over the long term as things would fail and how it would switch over to other connections. But now, you know, we've had a lot of customers that are interested in Starlink, but we've gotten even some customers that are interested in bonding multiple Starlinks, um, which is a possibility. So yeah, now we have multiple Starlinks in the office and we want to test more with being able to bond multiple Starlinks and seeing what performance we can get out of them. Uh, we think that can, that can be beneficial in some cases. Does that work, putting multiple Starlinks? links together it depends so i mean yeah it can depend on the situation but yeah it's particular if you can get them aimed at different satellites or depending how they're provisioning the speeds yeah it's possible to bond the star links and get get more speed out of them i wouldn't say necessarily in all cases i think there's some cases where if you're under the conditions where you're you're competing for bandwidth with other other users or there's low enough bandwidth available that you could end up just competing with yourself trying to bond the star links but i think there are some cases where yeah it can can work well yeah so similar to cellular, I mean, right. bonding two phones from the same carrier can give you a little bit of a boost. But we certainly have found that if you put together, you know, an AT&T and a Verizon and a T-Mobile, so you're on different towers, different internet connections, that's where you Speedify really actually gives you the speed of all of them combined. Well, it can be straight up magical. Yeah. Because their dead spots are never in the same place. Right. right. Yeah. And the same thing with Starlink. You, even if you had two Starlinks, you wouldn't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You know, if something happens with the Starlinks and they fall out, you want to have some other connection to, to fail over on if you're doing something really important. So yeah, same thing with the sailors having the different carriers. That one thing happens, something happens with one of the carriers, you still have the other carriers to fail over on too. Yeah. When we were doing those live stream tests, you mentioned when we first got the Starlink, I, you know, I was really involved and did a lot of the testing. And what I discovered was because, you know, Starlink is so good most of the time. We were getting 50 megabits up, but then there'd be this drop where for three minutes we'd get one megabit and then back 50. We discovered that even bonding a 3G connection or a DSL to it, right? You can bond anything, even an internet connection. You say, oh, that's almost too slow to use. Well, you know, most of the time you won't be using it. Speedify won't use it when you're getting the 50. But when it drops to one and the difference between having one and having four megabits, that. That's a huge difference. That's still being online, right? Yeah, Maybe awesome. your stream drops to 720p instead of 1080p, but you're not offline. The whole thing doesn't break up. Yeah, definitely. So before we get deeper into how we've been changing Speedify to make it work better with Starlink, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Click that button underneath for more deep dives and live streams on connectivity technology. What kind of changes do we actually make to Speedify to make it work better with Starlink? So because the Starlink's so variable, speeds are going up and down, the latency's jumping around, we had to make some adjustments to our congestion algorithms that determine you know, how much speed we can estimate on a connection, how many packets we can have in flight on a connection. We made some adjustments to those to better deal with the variability so that we could fully utilize the Starlink. You know, when we initially tested with the Starlink, the speed five wasn't always fully utilizing the download speed of it. So we had to make some tweaks there, as well as with our, our bonding algorithms of how much traffic we're gonna give to the Starlink versus other connections. With how quickly the Starlink could change, we had to make some tweaks there to the, the bonding algorithm so we could better balance with those connections. And then also with the, you know, failing over, as the Starlink would start to fail, we improved some of our detection of, of failing connections and made it react better. So as the Starlink was failing, we could shift traffic to other connections or, you know, start to bond in other connections if the Starlink was slowing down. Yeah, we made different improvements there around the failover, around bonding performance in a lot of those different areas. And we're continuing to make changes. You know, we've continually monitor with the Starlink. We're doing different tests. We're now starting to test with multiple Starlinks to get better bonding performance there. And I suspect that we'll have even more, more improvements in, in coming versions. So yeah, a few other improvements that we did with, with Starlink, uh, some of the more superficial things. Uh, we recognize when you're using a Starlink, we show a little icon on the dashboard in the UI. And the other tricky thing was, you know, some people complained about being able to access the Starlink uh, management dashboard when Speedify is connected. And normally, Speedify will bypass anything on your local subnet, uh, on your local network, but because the IP address it uses for the management interface is a different subnet, we had to put in some special rules to detect when you're on Starlink. If you're trying to access that management interface IP, we bypass that around Speedify so that it goes to the Starlink interface and you can still use the management interface when Speedify is connected, which I think with other VPNs, if your VPN is connected, you might not be able to use that so management can, So you yeah. can use Speedify and still use the Starlink app to control the Starlink. That's really nice. You're right. I, I don't think any other VPN can do that. Yeah, not that I've seen. Yeah. So with Speedify, you can bond your Starlink and your phone together and it'll mostly use the Starlink. And then when, if the Starlink, when it goes bad, because you know, there's no satellite overhead, it'll shift it to the phone. I understand that. But why doesn't that interrupt everything you're doing? Doesn't that change your IP address and break your live stream? 
So with Speedify, it's a, a VPN, meaning that it's acting as a VPN on, on your device, say your, you know, your phone or your computer, whatever's running the Speedify software. And it makes connections over each of your internet connections back to a Speedify VPN server, where all your internet, internet traffic from the device is going to go through the Speedify VPN to the Speedify VPN server oh, and then out to the Oh, so you're using the server's IP address the whole time, and that's how Speedify is able to move you from one connection to another without ever interrupting anything. That's right. So what's the difference between Starlink and HughesNet and Viasat? I'm right, there are other satellite internet companies here. So a lot of the traditional satellite internet companies like Viasat, for example, they used high altitude orbits for their satellites and they had a very small number of satellites that stay in geosynchronous orbit with the Earth. As the Earth rotates, the satellites are staying in the same position. So the satellites don't move in the sky. So this allows them to consistently serve a, a, an area of the globe and the satellite dishes can point right at it. But because of the high altitude, there's a lot of latency for people to send the, the data up to the satellite and back down. This can be hundreds of milliseconds, even over a second sometimes of latency, which can really decrease the speeds. With Starlink, the satellites are in much lower orbit, much closer to the Earth, and they're not staying in geosynchronous orbit, so they're constantly moving by in relation to the satellite dishes on the ground. So satellite dish has to constantly be tracking the satellites that are moving and switching between them. But because they're much lower orbit, it can have much better latency and end up having much better speeds at times where it's working well or where the satellites are overhead. As they move away, it can start to drop out. So the you know traditional satellite can give more consistent performance, but worse or slower performance, higher latency. The Starlink can give higher speeds, better performance, uh, lower latency, but it can drop in and out as, as things are moving by. And I think Starlink's constantly adding more and more satellites. They have thousands of satellites now, and they're getting better and better coverage, where you know, the traditional satellite providers usually only had a handful of satellites that service the whole globe. Yeah, the satellites, are, the Starlink satellites are small. They're the size of pizza boxes. And so with each rocket launch, they're sending you know at least 60. I think it was 60 before, and now they've moved to bigger rockets. I think it's a couple hundred at once of the, uh, just a stack of these pizza box satellites that get released once it's in orbit. So it's kind of neat. With the naked eye, you can actually see sometimes when you look up this chain of what look like stars moving together. And that's a bunch of Starlink satellites that just got launched and they haven't spread out yet. That's really cool. Astronomers say, no, it's not cool <laughs> yeah, at all. Every picture they take of space now has all these Starlink satellites. Yeah. <laughs> now that you understand more about how Starlink works with Speedify, check out our other video about bonding, bridging, and load balancing, because we clear up any confusion about the differences between these three technologies.